Totally Football Show Europe today draws galores for PSG uh, with Ren for Atleti against the worst team in Europe for UEFA with the little balls with names on and for us with some clever conclusions and all that and more top draw on this Totally Football Show all right Tuesday February the 27th and as Johnson once observed here we go again. <laughs> James Horncastle is with us. Hello. Alvaro Romeo. Hola, James. Rafael Honigstein. Hello. And Julien Laurent. Bonjour. Oui. Everyone well? Good, and you? Excellent. You're excellent. looking good. Rafael, just booking a nice restaurant there, are you? <laughs> no, I'm looking for my moment of the week. Ah, ah, it's never too late. Excellent. Have you been to any choice eateries of late? Yes, I have actually. Oh yeah, I can recommend highly. Yes, Donia. It's a Filipino place. Filipino place. Kingly Court. Wonderful. Right. Do they do that lovely that beef tapa? No. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. <laughs> but I'm sure they do <laughs> lots of nice things. What did you eat? I ate um, chicken hearts. Mmm. Really good. Wow. I ate um, some kind of sea bream. Ceviche, but it was called differently, different name. Mm. Um, were there two kinds of lamb tripe? <laughs> no. Uh, the food was really remember, outstanding. It's it, from yeah. the people behind <laughs> Marmaison and Bintang in Kentish Town. Nice. And they have the ice cream, the purple ice cream. Oh, the purple, ice cream. Oh, the purple ice cream. Very, very good. All right. Wow. Excellent. Wow. I guess... I mean, do you want another moment of the week or will that do? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's probably it. Um, yeah. No, moment of the week is the sequel mm. of last week's moment of the week. With the cars. With the cars. It's really sad news, Rafa, this. That it's over. No more chocolate coins, no more no. RC cars and enlivening your fixtures. I know. Who's thinking about toy makers and... <laughs> yeah. Chocolate, chocolate coin, coin manufacturers. manufacturers. Mm. They're the real victims of this. They're the left behind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, it's all over, James. All over. Uh, the deal's gone up in smoke. Bundesliga will not be selling part of its media rights. And this is because of the fans' action? Uh, it depends who you ask. There's some rumours that uh, CVC, just like Blackstone before them, pulled out themselves. Uh, that's been denied by all parties, on and off the record. And uh, they're saying that, yeah, the... Uh, Resistance was too much. It wasn't just the fans, but also internally, more and clubs, more and more clubs saying we don't want it or we should have a revote, and they just could, felt that the whole process is doomed, doomed. one way or the other. Mm. Um, and now the fans are happy, but there's a lot of money that's not going to come into the league now, uh, a billion euros nearly. So they have to find different ways if they still want to invest. Bitcoin, <laughs> crypto. crypto. <laughs> Mm. NFTs. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the good news, but then that's the bad news. Interesting. Jules, what's your moment of the week? My moment of the weekend eh, or the week is Sunday night in Paris. Mm. We have a very, we had a very special event. Kanye West, Kanye West uh, had a surprise gig, a listening experience because he didn't sing. He played his new album, and he just danced in the middle of the stage, not singing, not talking. Guess who was there? Didier freaking Deschamps in a suit, a Kanye West listening experience. This blew my mind. So I thought this has to be the moment of the, nice. not just the moment of the weekend, the moment of the month, I think, for like the whole of February. Right. Yeah. Amazing. But I mean, what was he doing? Like, Have you seen kind of film of it? Does he move? Does he? No, it's that, it seems, I mean, it seems very corporate with his suit to start yeah. with. Like not really the outfit that you would think. Were there a lot of kind of corporate invitees? No. Though? Just did you? Was, yeah, um, the tickets were between like 90, I mean, I, I, I I guess he would have been invited. Well, he would have got uh, like a VIP. I don't think he went and on the FNAC TM? website. Right. And I could not make it. I was at the League Cup final. So, uh -huh. silly me. you know, yeah. silly. I saw some footage of um, Kanye at the game. Mm. Was his entourage bigger than Kilian's? He looked the case, yeah. He looked the case. And he had the uh, full balaclava. Great. So, yeah, well done, Didier. I mean, well done. I'm not sure if he had fun or not, but I'll ask him next time I see him. Excellent. Two great moments of the week there. <laughs> Avro, how are you going to follow that? If it's going to gonna be difficult to improve that. Uh, I really want to see Didier the song. But mine one is uh, Luca Romero. Ah! Yeah. Mm. He, he's a young guy. He's still 19 years old. And he belongs to Milan, by the way. And he plays for Almeria. And Almeria are the worst team of the big five leagues. Mm. 
and he scored the brace for them against Atletico. It wasn't just one more game. It was the, against one of the big teams of La Liga. And Luca Romero's story is a very good one because he is still the youngest ever mm, footballer in La Liga to play a football game. Uh, he did that for Mallorca when he was 15. Okay. Uh, he was a young prodigy. At the age of 10, he took part in a TV reality with young footballers and he became like really, really, really popular. Then Mallorca offered him an eight-year contract. He played in La Liga, he went to Italy, and now he's on loan at Almeria. Mm. You know, the goals were beautiful, especially the second one uh, with the toes. He put it uh, very far away from Jano Black, and Luca Romero deserves to be the player of the weekend. Nice. What's the story with him and Milan, James? Well, they picked him up for free from Lazio. He was out of contract. He had a good under-20 World Cup for Argentina, scored a few goals and I think it was one of those things where it's too good an opportunity to turn down mm. he had a good preseason. he scored a wonderful goal in the US but the problem I suppose for him is that Milan have lots and lots of players in his position so if you think Christian Pulisic for example is a natural left winger but can only play on the right side because Rafa Leal plays on the left they were playing 4-3-3 they've now since kind of moved to 4-2-3-1 where Loftus Cheek plays as a, a ten, maybe Romero would have played there, but he's still very young. Very young mm. and not so consistent anyway. Yeah. He's the kind of guy who he wants to play for Argentina. Uh, Scaloni has already capped him once, I think, mm. but he hasn't played. Uh, but he could play for Spain as well and for Mexico. So I think that depending on how Ooh. good his career goes, mm. and sorry for the Mexican fans, he may end up playing for Mexico because maybe he's not good yet to play for Argentina and Argentina has many prodigies like Arnacho playing in a similar position too. Very interesting. James, how about you then? What stood out for you? Rafael was sat across from Kanye at Milan Fashion Week. Nice. He scored arguably the goal of the season in Serie A at the weekend against mm. Atalanta. Quite similar to Marcus Chiram's goal in the Derby della Madonnina back in September or whenever it was. But there was a Spygate scandal in oh, I Italy. I love that. Always like Not it. By gate time. scandal. Yeah. Not for the first time. In which uh, Torino's manager... You're suggesting manager. he doesn't need scandal off the gate, is that right? It's an oxymoron, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, I like it. It's goal line. Sorry, to- yeah. sorry, no, it's a tautology. Sorry. Tautology. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Apologies. It's uh, tautologously repetitive. <laughs> <laughs> this is this week's equivalent of its... Wolfsburger Aze. Aze. Genitive. Wolfsburger Aze. The, the grammar police. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Um, Torino sent their match analyst yep. to spy on Daniele De Rossi and Roma's tactics. Right. And the match analyst actually got into the training ground. It's not like, for example, what happened with Leeds in Derby County where yeah. you, yes, can, guy. you can sort of go along the road and you can see... This guy actually infiltrated uh, Trigoria. Under what cover? <laughs> Do we know? I don't know. Perhaps, you know. Janitor. Autograph hunter. <laughs> yeah, janitor. Yeah. And he did his work so well that Torino lost 3-2 on yeah, um, Monday close. night. It was yeah. close. Dybala scored a, a wonderful hat-trick. He was caught as well, right? By he was police. caught yeah, yeah. because police were doing patrols and they busted him. Yeah. They were doing patrols just randomly or they... I think they do patrols in and out of the ground, mm. Trigoria. In and around, center. I think. In and <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> must have had a tip-off from a different agency. Mm. Maybe so. Yeah. So many different agencies in, in Italy for that. That's an extraordinary story. But Roma have provided so much good content this week. I would have said Thursday was moment of the weekend, even the though Thursday's sh- not the weekend for the shootout yeah. of Svila, mm. the goalkeeper who De Rossi's brought in, making what, a couple of penalty saves, covering for Lukaku missing, uh, De Rossi forgetting he was a, a coach and running under the Curva Sud. Um, and he was like, I'm ashamed that I did that. You know, I, there was a time when as I was a player, I would run under the Curva Sud, I would jump on the gate and I would celebrate and mm. I, I, I've got to restrain myself and my instinct was like well Jurgen Klopp goes under the cop and fist yeah. pumps but I think this would be Matt like Sorry. Jurgen Klopp running into the cop <laughs> right <laughs> almost but oh. yeah so Roma generally Roma generally Roma well, we'll talk more about Jose Roma. already forgotten we have five wins out of six in the league they've qualified for 
the next round of the Europa League where they'll play Brighton, which is going to be very exciting. Um, this Monday night was seen as the first big game that they've had, and it was against Torino. Well, which, Inter was yeah, Inter was the biggest. Yeah, one. but in terms of I think a people consider that Inter in a league of their own, right? And so this was seen as a kind of okay, this is a a measure above the games that you played so far against like so Ver- Verona, Salernitano, and that sort of thing, and they they passed it. So yeah, very a lot of positivity. Brilliant. Okay. What about a touch for Di Balado? Did you see that control? Mm. Oh, extraordinary. extraordinary. Seek, seek it out. You put it on your yeah. Twitter feed. If you're Just on Twitter, also have a look at Royces. at Julian Laurence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the ball drops out of the night sky. <laughs> and the commentary basically goes, it's from another world. It's from another world. He let the air out of that ball. And the best is maybe the Rossi's who is on the touchline right by where Dybala t- controls the ball. And even the Rossi goes, wow, like that, and put his head back because he's just, even him. He, I think he goes, he's on. <laughs> even him is so amazed by the quality of it. Yeah, it's magnificent. Anyway, very nice. Now, ooh, uh, viewers on our YouTube channel can see that we have a diamond encrusted wheel of football in the center of our table here. What? And also that Alvaro is in a mankini. Give him a wave, Alvaro. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, at the, the Totally Football Show on YouTube. Anyway, uh, Alvaro, give that wheel of football a spin, please, and let's see what it lands on. It's never too late. Woo! Woo! Jules, Liga! Yay! Yay! Come on, be delighted. We go first for the first time this first season. Time in eight is really, yeah, is yeah, the first time I think so. The house loses. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> just cash in <laughs> alrighty so the scene Sunday afternoon Jules uh, Kylian Mbappe back at the Parc des Princes for the first time yeah. since he'd announced that he was doing one yep. in the summer mm. PSG are losing to Ren. goal down with 25 minutes to go and Luis Enrique takes off Mbappe takes him he off. takes him off after 65 minutes, you're right. And you know when the... Uh, you have the to get used to playing without killing, he says. Exactly. So when the pitch side reporter, we know we've all either done it or been on coverage where the, or you can watch the TV and, and the guy says, oh, there will be a substitution for so, so, and so. So the guy on French television goes, it looks like Kylian Mbappe is coming off, but, but nobody really believes it. And said, so maybe, maybe they got the number wrong. Maybe it's not him because this just has never happened. Uh, Tuchel took him off when he was there against Montpellier, but it was much later in the game, mm. after 65 minutes. That but also with the side, a, a goal down. Yeah, and a goal down, you're right. And him wearing the armband because Marquinhos was not playing too. Right. So he threw the armband at kind of Vitinha. He looked well, well crossed, as you would expect. Not happy at all then on the bench. PSG came back to draw 1-1 really late with a very dodgy penalty that Gonzalo Ramos dived twice. Uh, he got, finally got one. Julien Stefan, the, the Rennes manager, said at the, at, at the end of the game, said this is a, a big team penalty. The kind of mm. big, you know, like like a Juve or Bayern or, you know, when you don't play well, you get something like that from the referee that you should not get if you were any other team. In. And Rennes, who, to be fair, didn't play that great, but scored an amazing goal by Amin Guiri, the only shot on target they had, still didn't deserve to, to, to draw and to lose point in, in that way. But for Kylian, and you are, Luis Enrique, um, very naturally and, and transparently explained at the end, listen, he's going to leave, so may mm. as well get him ready. And they even talks in Paris right now that he's known for a while that Kylian was leaving. And that's one of the reasons why he played him centrally to play Barcola wide on the left, to oh. get Barcola used to play in that position, get game time for when Kylian would go next season. So if it's that, it's great planning from Luis Enrique. We know that he's, he doesn't take any prisoner, is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. So he does his own thing, Kylian or no Kylian, it doesn't matter. He didn't think he was good enough in that game, so he took him off. But I think the relationship for the next three months now, until the season is over, could be quite... Uh, spicy. Spicy is the word mm. between them two. PSG <coughs> were, what, 11 points clear going mm. into that game? So you can afford yeah, to of take course. some risks, of I course. guess. Yeah, for sure. Uh, they've got Monaco next week. Yeah, it should be a good game. Monaco right. won a Lens in a very exciting, entertaining game on Saturday, mm. 3-2. Uh, Minamino scoring a lovely winner lovely right goal. at the end, lovely yeah. goal. And Flo Balogun, who scored one great goal, missed another penalty. That's four this season. Oof. Three in a row, which... Uh, they don't have Opta. anyone else? So, Adi Hutter, who's... Lo- I mean, I love Adi Hutter. Uh, yeah, I don't think he'll be there next season. But he's, he's always very open. And he said, yeah, I think I'm going to start rethinking about <laughs> the, penal- the order for penalties. Ben Yedder would have taken it, but he was off. So yeah. Balogun was the next one. But when you know that he's missed three already this season, 
not sure he was very wise to let him take it. Mm. And on the other hand, mm. the Nice goalkeeper, mm. Nice only drew this weekend, uh, Bulka saved his fourth penalty of the season in wow. the league, four of six. Mm. And he's huge and, and he's got massive arms and everything. But four of six is pretty remarkable this season. All mm. right. Monaco moving past Nice mm. into third place. Leon have moved up to 10th. They won again. 2 1 against Mets. Yeah. Very unhappy fans at Mets. Yeah, they stormed the pitch mm. at the end. Yeah. And uh, Stone Wise, tw- 10 wins out of 12. Wow. Ten com- wins out yeah, of no 12. competition. Like I said, scoring. Uh, ben Rama scoring his first mm. goal since leaving West Ham to join. And now they're in the French Cup on Tuesday night. Oh, yeah. Record against Strasbourg. Strasbourg. Who are in free fall. Uh, Not happy with Todd Bowley and Co. Yeah. And uh, Ekbali as well. Mm. Uh, the fans not happy because they have maybe the slimmest squad in the league and they have loads of injuries now and there's not much Patrick Vieira can do. But it's tough for them. It's really tough for them. Strasbourg are currently three points off the bottom three. Leon, uh, are they three points better off than they are. Are they blue billionaire bottle jobs as well at Strasbourg? Mm. Oh, it's a good mm. point that is. Well, not bil- no, not billions because they haven't spent that kind of money. No. But they spent a few in the summer, but then almost nothing in the in January. And what I think angers the fan the most, the mm. Strasbourg Ultra especially, is that when Patrick Vieira asked for a number nine, to his, his president, Mark Keller, and to the ownership to get to strengthen the squad, they sent David Washington from Chelsea. Mm. And Patrick was like, really? Like, I mean, and the fans were like, why, don't, why can't we just sign our own guy mm. for, uh, who's, you know, who's got a better CV than David Washington? Same with Andre Santos. They wanted a six. Uh, Ekbali and Chelsea said, yeah, I've got a six for you. Here you go. So I mean, it feels a bit like you're the rejection, like you are the like, yeah, we don't care about you. So exactly. Big brother, yeah. 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 To so be honest, thinnest squad, Strasbourg, biggest squad, Chelsea, no? Here's like the catalogue of Chelsea players that you yeah, can choose true. from. Mm. True, true. And I, I understand that they are going to use Strasbourg to make Chelsea better. I think this is the idea for them. That's why they loan all those players to Strasbourg. But... I mean, if Strasbourg go down, a bit like with Trois and in the City Group, I, I don't think that's good either for Blue No, Paul it certainly is. You know what we haven't talked about yet? No. Les Grands Hey! <laughs> here they are. Say. So a week ago, we were sat yeah. here having a chuckle over uh, Jean Le Fondicien hiring the fellow who got binned halfway through the Africa Cup of Nations. Yeah, that's but right. lo and behold, he's gone and had two. Straight victories, big Incredible. ones. Too. Yeah, against yeah. Shakhtar in Europe, which yeah. is very good. Now they're going to play Villarreal. Yeah, Marcelino. Are, exactly, mm-hmm. who are managed by the former. Of course. Who left because he was scared, mm. you know. Why was he scared? Because. because right? <laughs> Sorry? Yeah. He, he, was, he was threatened, yeah. <laughs> he basically, the start of the scene was not um, very good, so the, the ultras were not happy. So they're demanding, the, so they demanded a meeting with. Uh, the president, Pablo Longoria, the uh, sporting director, uh, Javier Ribalta, the manager who was not there, Marcelino, mm. and they literally threatened the hell out of all the people in that room to mm. the point that Marcelino said, listen, I'm, I'm a football coach. I can't have this uh, thrown at me. So yeah, he decided to leave. And to be fair to him, it's probably the, the right thing to do at the okay, time. Okay, but now he gets to face them. He gets to go yeah. back to the Belgium. the last 16 of the Europa yeah. League. And then John luc sure. go on and follow that win against Shakhtar by yeah. another win. This weekend, where they played great, they had a hybrid back three, back four, yeah. and uh, Joe Biden, as he was uh, <laughs> nicknamed by some of the Marseille Ultra, it's not from me yeah. because of his age. Yeah. So far, he's doing great, and he's much like the actual Joe Biden. Some would say. <laughs> some yeah, would say. There you go. Exactly. Uh, although there are some big issues, but yeah. But anyway, yeah. moving <laughs> along, yeah. moving along. Uh, Alvaro, how is Marcelino doing at, at Villarreal? He's doing a fine job. Is no, he? Because I read they've only had what two wins in the last eight. Yeah, but uh, look difference. at the wins. They've Barcelona and Real Sociedad away so okay. little by little they are they're improving okay. um, I think that Villarreal came from a very bad place with Kike Setien they have no defenders and Marcelino little by little is uh, making his uh, uh, his magic I would say that uh, Villarreal has a good team as well and they are going to be competitive probably he calls in sick for the game against Marseille and mm. he doesn't go there I guess <laughs> but yeah I think that they can be dangerous as well they sent Gonzalo Guedes in the summer uh, sorry, in the winter transfer window, and I think that Gonzalo Guedes hasn't been very competitive in the United Kingdom, but he has always delivered in Spain, so he's a new asset they've got. I think that they are playing well, yeah. Excellent. 
All right. Hey, what a great league on Rana. We should start with always. French football Morocco. Exactly, always. Uh, next up, uh, why don't we have a look at one or two of the other names out of the pot on Friday's Europa League and Conference League draw. Woo! Woo! All right, Friday the draws for your Europa League and Conference League last 16. In the Conference League, the big one, Jules, yeah. was Aston Villa yeah. getting Ajax. Yeah, of course. Uh, I don't know where you want me to start on Jordan Henderson. <laughs> well, <laughs> My favorite they, they player. won't be starting with Jordan Henderson by the looks of it because that's now two straight games that he's been left out of the uh, the team. That's right. Uh, How did Ajax get through in that game against Bolo? It Blitz? was incredible. Yeah. They were so... So they were 2-0 down in the first leg going yeah. into the, 80, uh, I think, to the 90th minute. Managed to pull it back. 2-2. Two, two. And then, yeah, one eight. They were dominated from start to finish by Bodo Glimt. Bodo had hit the woodwork three times, I Mm. think. Went to extra time. They had a man up as well. And then it was 10 v 10. Ridiculous that Ajax got through. Yeah. And I think Aston Villa would beat Ajax. I think they're a much better team, even over two legs. AZ Alkmaar beat Ajax this weekend uh, with both goals and a 2 0 victory scored by Van Bommel. Yeah. (laughs) 19 year old Ruben Van Bommel. There you go. Yeah. Excellent. Anyway, that's Aston Villa Ajax, and you're confidently predicting that Aston Villa are going to go through. I think so. That's in the Conference League. In the Europa League last 16, Marseille Villarreal, as we've heard. The two favourites, Liverpool and Leverkusen, they got decent draws. Sparta for Klopp's side. Well, Ooh. a good team. No, Le- so Leverkusen yeah, didn't want Karabakh necessarily. So the, did they not? Yeah, but they the beat trip. them in the, in the group 6 1 on aggregate. It's just a long... It's a, travel, it's a long trip. But uh-huh. Sparta are not bad. Eh? Yeah, uh, Betty, Sparta Betty's are out of uh, Europe uh, because Sparta also, beat them in the group of states. They put Galatasaray out in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The manner in which Karabag qualified as well was probably the story of that playoff round. Do you no? think, yeah? Oh, it was incredible. Mm. I mean, they won 4-2 in Braga and then in Baku, mm. they went a, down, a man down they can see two goals, goes to extra time. You think there's no way back from here. And yet they pulled it out of the bag. And I think like a 19-year-old unknown Azeri mm. scored the goal that qualified them in what, the stoppage time of extra time. Something like incredible. That's incredible. No, you're right. It is amazing. But just looking at those two big victories for Bayern in the group, you think, yeah. But we'll see. The magic of cup football. Benfica are going to be up against Rangers. Rangers currently leading in Scotland. Nine straight wins, I think, they've had. Yeah, Philippe Clement doing an amazing, amazing job there after job, being yeah. signed from Monaco. But then Benfica are on an absolute fire at the moment. So but they should have lost against Toulouse. Toulouse yeah. should have knocked them should out. They? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, they were that good. All right. Freiburg, West Ham, Raf. They faced each other in the group, didn't Tough they? Tough one yeah. for Freiburg, yeah. They were a little bit lucky to get through mm. against mm. Lens, but I think that's going to be the end of the road. Mm. Freiburg are very weird because uh, in Germany mm, mm. they don't score many goals the goal difference is low and mm. in Europe I don't know why mm. they're scoring so many in the group stage they score as many as Liverpool I think it, it's inexplicable really. In yeah I really think so yeah. so they only scored one in two matches against West Ham losing both games they must have uh, piled them on in the other matches yeah they had bad teams though in that group did uh, they outside Ooh. of uh, they were the two strongest team by far right. yeah Stewart Pucare oh the new Stewart Pucare and another team that you never heard of yeah, uh, Atlanta. That's a tough draw. <laughs> Sporting. Yes, they won there. That's true. <laughs> one nil in October. But That's one of the best since ties. Then now. that is going to be. Sporting great. had been uh, on an amazing run of results. They've had fifteen games with thirteen wins, just one defeat, forty-eight goals scored in those fifteen matches. Forty-eight. But they drew this weekend, though, no? They drew that this is weekend. True. Yeah, that yeah. Is Benfica true. won, so they're a bit behind now. Mm. They got Goikeres. Goikeres. Yeah. Scoring lots and lots of goals. Mm. Marcus Edwards. Marcus Edwards, who had like kind of an uh, incredible game in which he missed a sitter and gave <laughs> yeah. away a penalty yeah. in the and playoff well, round, yeah. which was which was fun. I, I say amazing in that he was genuinely amazing. Chances he created, assists yeah. and that sort of thing. So a real kind of uh, mixed performance. But but yeah, Atalanta themselves are going well. I mean, they drew against Milan at San Siro at the weekend. They didn't deserve to, but it's still an important point. Could get back into the Champions League. They too have lots of strikers, although Skamaka, oh Jesus, he was awful when he came on against uh, Milan. De Ketelier got taken off. Lukman came on, didn't score. So I Lukman mean, looks overweight, don't you think? I'm I mean, watching that game and I'm like, well, okay, maybe it's the hairstyle. 
Okay. But I thought he looked like he put on weight. Hmm? Yeah, I was really surprised. He, he looked sharp and, he, you know, he, physically was okay. His week off from AFCON. You yeah, think I just <laughs> wonder if he partied a lot the... to celebrate the loss in the final. All <laughs> oh, right. It's going to be a tough game, that one. Mm -hmm. Milan got Slavia Prague, who were in Roma's group. Yep. Did That's... better. They won that group. They did. It's quite um, embarrassing that uh, Roma didn't win that group. I think it was a factor in Jose being sacked because I think internally there was some feeling that the group was weaker than the one that they had in the Conference League when they had like Zoya Luhansk and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, mm, Slavia. Okay. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. But you mentioned it before, along with maybe Sporting. Atalanta, Roma, Brighton, a really yeah, eye-catching really tie. Be the two friends, De Zerbi and De Rossi. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. kids, both in London at the moment. They Live go and together. watch Roma Club London. Uh, Roma Club Londra. They watch the games there. They do. Live together, studying here. And yeah, De Rossi said that Roberto's daughter will not be wearing her Roma scarf, presumably for for this game. De Zerbi is from Brescia. I mean, De Zerbi is a kind of Big Brescia fan. People, are they fans of Roma? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Every summer there is this thing called the Festa della Dea, which is kind of pre-season get-together that Atlanta put on for the fans. And they do these kind of outlandish things like where they hire a tank. And one year they got someone, I think the, the, the chairman, Ped Cassi, was on the tank when it ran over two cars. Uh, one of which had Roma spray painted on it and the other had Brescia spray painted on it. Mm. So um, they don't get on. Do you know who's got a tank? <laughs> That's a great secret. One of your friends? <laughs> Eddie the Beast Hall. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't he's he a tank? tank? He is a tank, but yeah. he's also got a tank, which he insists he can drive on the road. <laughs> it's, you know, road In wartime? No, no. He, okay, says, now. he, says he could, got a red he could take it down the shops. Anyway, hey, how much does that cost a tank? I have no idea. What you didn't yeah. ask him? Uh, the, there is a the insurance premium is very I high. <laughs> yeah, uh, practical questions are almost not relevant, you know. <laughs> uh, maybe I did ask him. But anyway, anyway, um, De Rossi yeah. and De Zerbi, as you mentioned, great friends, from kindred where? spirits. From, from where? Yeah, Do you know from where? Well, De Rossi, since he's been retired, is kind of obviously spent time doing his coaching badges and has spent a lot of time with De Rossi. I mean, he was uh, with De Zerbi. He was here at the beginning of the season. He had uh, dinner with Enzo Maresca, Pep Guardiola and De Zerbi. Um, and, uh, and yeah, they just, they get How do they, their kids know each other because they're friends or is it the other way around? Yeah, it's, it's that. And obviously since Roberto has been in the UK, um, yeah, his daughter's here and I think uh, De Rossi's eldest uh, is here as well. So, but I think they've got a lot in common in terms of how they see football as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was quite remarkable on Monday night, having sat through two and a half years of Jose Mourinho post-match press conferences to hear a Roma coach talk about XG. And De Rossi was doing that. So, I mean, he's been, he's been very impressive since he got the job. The style of football has completely changed. They've played a back four in some, they've played a back three. They're always uh, very expansive and attacking in how they play. Really interesting on like uh, uh, on Monday night how their strategy was about breaking the kind of man marking system that Juric's Torino have and sort of having Gianluca Mancini as centre back play nominally out wide on the right and Christensen far right because they've noticed that Torino's strikers or attacking players are not very diligent when it comes to man marking so stuff like that and and yeah I mean De Rossi very complimentary of De Zerbi you know he thinks he's a, one of the few football geniuses out there and you know he's going to have a few sleepless nights coming up with a strategy you know he was saying like we don't know whether we're going to go long we don't know whether we're going to press them or sit off them we don't know how we're going to resist their press play through them so it's it should be a hell of a team talk <laughs> 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 no but to be fair he's been very good and like again just like he's he's almost a little bit too open mm. in how much he talks about the team and how they've game planned 
you know, they were t he was talking last night about you know these things that they picked up on match analysis and from Torino's game against Udinese and that sort of thing. He's very forthcoming, and he, he gives really detailed explanations for what they're doing and that sort of thing. Do you think he could get the job on the permanent basis in so, the yeah. summer? You think? And I think even if the club, which is without a sporting director at the moment, and the assumption would be that a new sporting director would come in and want to bring someone in mm. of their own. I think when they appointed him, there was always the quote-unquote risk that he would do not this well, but well enough for the fans to be like, you can't get rid of De Rossi. Um, yeah, he is a club legend. He gets us, he understands us. And it would create a problem. But right now, it's a really nice problem yeah. uh, to have because the team is pushing themselves into contention mm. for Champions League. Uh, two two points off uh, Atalanta in fifth. Bologna, yeah, but I mean, um, Bologna, Bologna in fourth. Atalanta have got a game in hand, which yeah. they play this week against Inter. Mm. But but yeah, I think the way he's got their best players playing, he's getting lots of skill players into the team. They are fun to watch. We mentioned how many great moments there are, uh, Roma. I mean, it was quite bold of him to basically say, you know, Rui Patricio, thanks. But we're moving on from you. We're going to play Zvila, who's been at the club for two and a half years and has hardly played. And Zvila has been outstanding um, in the last uh, last few games. So that's that was a bold decision uh, by De Rossi. So so yeah, I think he he could get the job on a on a permanent basis. Although, how, how do you fancy his chances against Brighton? Well, he's obviously less experienced than Dzerbi, and. But he's got more talent, I think, available to him. Mm -hmm. Really? You rate if the Roma squad over the Brighton one? If everybody's fit, yeah, probably. Yeah. Brighton has Lukaku, many players in the Dybala, side. Mm -hmm. but again, in terms of experience of Asbu, European nights, Spinazzola, mm -hmm. and Roma, they have more experience in this kind of game than this season, Brighton. Brighton have, what, four straight wins? They've been there. Yeah, but sure. this Brighton squad, apart from a few examples, mm -hmm. like maybe Ansu Fati, the others have never, you know, some of them had never played in Europe before. Yeah, yeah. my, my they, big curiosity on Thursday when they played Feyenoord was this is De Rossi's um, second game coaching the team in a European competition. Is the spell about to break that Mourinho had in Europe? Because that's mm. where Mourinho's success with this team was. It was in forging a mentality for European nights. They've made back to back European finals. That experience mm. for this group of players will come in handy against against Brighton who are playing in Europe for the first time in their history so I think yeah my instinct is the ZB will probably have the edge over De Rossi but I think that experience the last two years the feeling that they've got over this inferiority complex which would often hold Roma back on European nights and how well the team is reacting to De Rossi mm. certainly gives Roma a very very good chance the thing is right. I mean, Roma with that quality players, uh, they can really do something and inflict something to Brighton because when Brighton crumbles, they crumble properly. I remember against Luton Town. For and when example. Roma crumbles. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah, then it can, it can be a really interesting time, maybe 5 nil in the first leg and 0 5 in the second leg. Well, or, or we get lots of goals. Like, I mean, Roma have been scoring yeah, threes and you know, that sort of thing. On this. They've also been conceding. They concede yeah. the same goal a lot, which is crosses into the box they're, they're not dealing with them and De Rossi's aware of it he keeps saying that's my fault we haven't had time to train I want to spend more time on basically cutting off crosses into our box mm. but um, so I think it, I, I think we could get you know two games in which the aggregate score is 8-6 alright those games coming up the first legs in about 10 days time Thursday week let's spin our giant wheel of football again Woo! Bundesliga. Hey, Rafa. Hey, James. So, uh, let's see. Bundesliga, the fans won this weekend because yeah. the much-hated TV deal's gone. And, uh, ooh, every team in the Bundesliga scored. That's yes, pretty good. But not every team won. Not every team won, strangely. <laughs> Among those that did, you buy a Leverkusen. How many is that now unbeaten in a row? 32, new record. No, it's 33, Rafa. Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah 32 was the... Yeah, 32 yeah, was the old Bayern Munich Yeah, yeah, record. 33, new, new record. record, yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Courtesy uh, of a 2-1 a... 
2-1 win over Mainz. Yeah, with an element of fortune. A bit of help of Robin go. Centner. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Robin couldn't. No, that doesn't worry about uh, um, Robin, Robin Zentner, the, the Mainz goalkeeper who basically fumbled the shot into his own goal late on. Yeah, from yeah. Robert Andrich. Mm. A nice goal from Granit Xhaka. Yeah, a nice and celebration. Lovely, even better celebration. celebration. Yeah. Xhaka, lovely goal, as you say, from Xhaka. He then pulls up mid celebration, clutching his hamstring. Cue much consternation on the bench. And then he kind of, as I, I can't remember who That's commented, he kind of Kaiser Sozies it, his walk out of it. And yes. then. Uh, Kaiser Sozies is a good. Good, and, uh, and, good and then and then there's all smiles, but I'm not sure how much Xavi Alonso really enjoyed that. Well, he said he'd, he'd done it in training a few times already, and he was surprised that people took it seriously. Okay. Yeah. Well, Frimpong was in the joke because Frimpong is doing the similar. So mm. you can tell how they prepared. Yeah. But uh, yeah, not convincing performance from Leverkusen. Probably their poorest in this year. Right. But mark of champions. Possibly. Yeah. Probably. Bayern got a win, Raf. <laughs> I know, it's a bit of a surprise, surprise result. And they left it very late. Harry Kane, as, as he often does or has, uh, really saved their bacon. Two goals. The second one, a real beauty and also great timing because it was already an injury <coughs> time. Mm. Uh, a draw would have made for another pretty difficult week for Thomas Tuchel and the club. Right. But they they just about got the win and... Things were a lot quieter in Munich. Okay, 27 goals in 23 matches for Kane, which is just crazy. I, w- I was curious, you know, watching the highlights, was this, because it was against RB Leipzig, so it was a big opponent and there was a lot of pressure, but w- you, was there a little bit of a Tuchel is leaving bounce to this, that the atmosphere had lifted? I saw, for example, Thomas Muller laughing with Tuchel on the sidelines. So when the, when the, when the uh, it's really, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, I thought as a team they looked, they looked, a little bit better, they looked happier. Um, was it because of Tuchel leaving? I don't know. The, the lineup was sort of a bit surprising because when Tuchel said, I can be more ruthless, a lot of people thought, okay, that means it's the end for De Ligt, it's the end for um, Kimmich, it's the end for Gretzka, it's the end for Müller, but they were all there. Yeah. Um, okay, you didn't have that many options, lots of injuries at the moment. So perhaps Tuchel's hand was somehow forced. But yeah, it was a, it was a decent performance from Bayern. Not, not amazing. Um, but they, they got the job done. There was a very funny moment uh, afterwards because Tuchel did a bit of a Bielsa uh, watching the game on this aluminium Sad, yeah. kind of suitcase. His um, suitcase? Well, oh, he's leaving. Somebody asked him. <laughs> well, somebody asked him. Somebody okay. said, you sat on a suitcase. What is in that suitcase? And are you sending a message that you are on sitting on packed on a packed suitcase, which yeah. is kind of a German expression for you're about to leave, you know, mm. sitting on a packed suitcase. Yeah. Also sitting on a packed suitcase, Raf, Alfonso Davies. Yes. Bayern very sad. They still think they've got some hope oh, really? of changing his mind, but So he's He's agreed terms? Is this unofficial? He's basically said, yes, yeah, unofficial, of course, because um, his contract is still f- right. running. Um, but he's basically agreed to join Real Madrid even in the, su- even the summer mm. if they can find an agreement with the Bayern right. or at the end of his contract in 2025. Now, this is very much Bayern getting a taste of their own medicine. They mm. like to do deals like that and then say to the club, look, the player's coming. What do you want to do? You want to make some money or you want to lose them for free? We don't care. Um, I think that they will probably pay a bit of money because Bayern, I think, cannot afford to... Uh, losing him is bad enough. Losing him for three is, is, is very bad. So I think they'll do a deal in the summer. Okay. So Leipzig beaten, they still are just a point behind Dortmund because Dortmund lost as well. 3-2 at home to Hoffenheim on Sunday. Hoffenheim are their bogey team for some reason. It's, it's strange how often they lose against them. But yeah, this was their first defeat in 2024. They had this sort of mini run of good games, decent results. Um, but we're back in square one where people are just not really convinced. What is it they're doing? What is Terzic doing? Is he the right manager? Um, they were lucky that Leipzig didn't get anything because otherwise the pressure would be much bigger. But it's not... It's not a happy, 
happy situation. If it wasn't for Bayern's troubles and the fact that Leverkusen are going so strong and get, so getting a lot of the positive headlines, I think there'll be a lot more focus on mm. on Dortmund's issues. OK, Dortmund next week. Go to Union Berlin. Big game for leaders by Leverkusen. The derby with Köln. Yeah, it's always a massive game. Köln, of course, um, not going not going well at all. Decent result for them. They drew at Stuttgart, high-flying Stuttgart, uh, with Sebastian Hoeneß, who is also in the mix for the Bayern job. Of course. If a certain Xabi Alonso Who's cannot. pushing his candidacy? Yeah, he's, he's got, he some, he's got the club. some people <laughs> in the club, yeah. who, Support of the club who think he might be he might be up for it. But you're laughing about the family connections, but of course it is also a double-edged sword. It makes, no, things, a little bit, well, yeah. it makes things a little bit trickier for him because if he goes there, everyone say, oh, he's just going there because his uncle is uh, is the big boss and his, his brother is is a powerful agent. Sorry, his father is a, is a powerful agent. Um, but, yeah, I think if, if Alonso doesn't work out, they will they will definitely look at him. Uh, Rafa, very quickly on uh, Tony Cross because he's mm-hmm. back with the he's German back. national team. Uh, I guess the, the reaction has been really positive in Germany about that because he's having a great season. Yes and no. Um, I think a lot of people think that this is kind of bit of an admission that things are going badly, mm-hmm. that you have to get cross back. It also, I think, poses the question, how is that new midfield going to look? It looks as if Nagelsmann wants to play Pascal Kroos next to Tony Kroos and Gündogan as a 10, which is interesting, but it leaves out Kimmich, or Kimmich has to then play right back. Mm-hmm. It leaves out Goretzka. It... Um, where is Musiala in all of Musiala, this? Musiala, he wants to play... Musiala and Verzi wants to play as the wide man. Okay. So it's going to be a whole new Germany setup and maybe not the quickest <laughs> uh, in terms of uh, how that midfield is going to look. So, okay. so no, interesting interesting times ahead. Mm. France and the Netherlands next month. In March, uh, the friendlies. <sighs> all right. Tough one. What do you say, Rafa? Do you want to reach out and give that wheel a spin? All right. Ooh, look at that, Alvaro. A little bit of Liga for you. A little bit of Sunday night, Real Madrid 1, Sevilla 0. Letter writings, Sevilla 0. Letter writing, Sevilla. Yeah, very mm. good. Uh, they wrote a letter on Saturday morning. Mm. Uh, did they actually? Did they write a letter and then... <laughs> and they gave it to a pigeon and they yeah. sent it to Madrid. Uh, they sent a statement because mm. um, they are very upset with... Um, those game previews that Real Madrid TV are doing, just right. pointing at the referees um, in a preventive way. Uh, Real Madrid TV is Real Madrid, so it basically they are sending an institutional message, uh, criticizing a referee before the referee does his job. Mm. This is what they have been doing for a long time. And yes, Sevilla reported that to Comité de Competición, which belongs or is part of the Spanish FA. What kind of punishment can Real Madrid get for this? I cannot tell you. I okay. mean, they are investigating it, this. The, to what extent is it a demonstrable uh, mean, it's opinions on a TV show? Can they really be charged for anything? It's more, it's more than a, it's more I mean, than opinions on a TV show were given by a certain former general manager of Juventus back in the day, Luciano Moggi. Yeah, would have but a that say wasn't what, what they were would, done for. Yeah, it was because it was. About, it, people think Calciopoli was about match fixing. It was not about match no, fixing. No, it was it's about, about, about power and influence. Yeah. And you're exerting an influence by going on TV, criticizing referees, maybe suggesting you should run a certain clip or something like this. Yeah. No. Okay. So that was more of it when they were when they had like Bisc- uh, Biscardi, Biscardi. And they, you do you attack this referee or you praise that referee, and then they let the referees know if you're with us then you'll get the praise. And if you're not, then <laughs> good luck, boy. And equally, they would tell players, if you... Uh, sign with us. Sign or with our, us. Our agency. Yeah. And uh, you maybe give us favours when we ask for favours, then mm. you'll get a call-up for the national side and that will get big jobs. But anyway, yeah, okay. So mm. no, I'm, I'm just uh, wondering to what extent they can be charged no, uh, with it. Look, uh, number one, uh, this is not an opinion from a pundit sitting down on a round table uh, on Real Madrid TV. Mm. This is the message of Real Madrid 
sent to, towards the referees. I mean, mm. they are editing these videos and they are playing them. There is someone who does the quality check and says, this can be published. Uh, I think that the referees get influenced because these videos, even if they don't watch Real Madrid, which has only a 3% uh, TV share in Spain, right. but uh, those videos become viral. So at the end, everyone watches them because they are on Twitter, they are in Facebook, they are whatever. So uh, the, the new thing about um, about all this, and uh, probably the freshest thing, is that it has been Sevilla who has been uh, reporting this. Hasn't been Barcelona, because Barcelona have behind them, on top of their shoulders, the biggest scandal in Spanish football, the yes. Negreira scandal. Mm. So whatever Barcelona says or does, I wouldn't say that they are legitimated to say anything. Okay. But Sevilla has been always an outsider. And with the former president, Jose Maria del Nido, I remember that uh, Sevilla was saying many times that they were the real winners of La Liga because the TV share before was so unfair towards Barcelona and Real Madrid that Sevilla felt that they really were the La Liga winners because they were competing with uh, less means than Real Madrid and Barcelona, but not only less, way lesser means than them. So Sevilla has become, again, uh, the outsider of Spanish football. I am surprised that no one else has flagged this in the past, that Atletica, Club Bilbao, Barcelona, sorry, uh, Real Sociedad, because they are teams that are big as well in Spain. And, uh, you know, I want to see what is the development of this. Mm. Uh, the report has been made mm -hmm. and uh, it's difficult to know exactly what kind of repercussion this can have for Real Madrid. Well, wow. lo and behold, they played against Real Madrid this weekend and Real Madrid's opening goal was, was disallowed by yeah. referees. Yeah, uh, in my opinion, it shouldn't have because I think mm. the default was very small. But anyway, uh, when you... Uh, freeze an image and you show it a million times, you end up changing your opinion. Uh, but Real Madrid was uh, winning that game not comfortably because Sevilla had their uh, approaches toward Lunin's goal, even though they didn't produce many shots. And uh, what a goal from Luka Modric. Luka Modric? What a How goal. old is he now? Uh, well, he was born in 1985, so 38 or 39, I'm not too sure now. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, he's turning 39 this year. Okay. Scored the only goal of the game with nine minutes to go, becoming the oldest scorer for Real in La Liga since Ferenc Puskas. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, in 1965. Curiously, Puskas' goal was also against Sevilla. No way. Huh. There you go. Amazing. Hmm. Incredible. And uh, you can say that uh, Luka Modric and uh, Puskas uh, both have uh, a very long career, but mm. the difference is that Puskas have two, because I think he had to uh, stop playing football for a little while. Um, and then he played for Real Madrid in his second spell as a footballer and he was phenomenal. But yeah, Luka Modric as well this season, uh, he hasn't played a lot. I think that every time he's on the pitch, he is one of the good players, be, at least technically speaking. And, uh, you know, his contract runs out now in, in June, so I'm sure that he wants to extend his contract, but I don't think that Real Madrid is going to offer him a contract extension. Okay. It doesn't look like right mm. now because he's not playing a lot. Okay. Uh, you mentioned earlier the 2-2 draw for Atletico Madrid away at Almeria. Did Athletic Club de Bilbao take advantage of no. that slip by Simeone's side? We don't. We can't. I mean, we didn't take it against Almeria two weeks ago either. Uh, I remember we did the show on Monday and I yep. said, oh yeah, we, if we are winning tonight, we mm. will be fourth. We didn't beat Almeria. You and this time we red, white, yeah. stripe, we, we bought millions. We bottle it again. Basque I mean, bottlers. It's hard to Basque see. Bottlers. But yeah, no, no, we, hopefully we won't bottle it uh, this Thursday yeah. because we're playing the Spanish Cup uh, second leg semi-final Ooh. against Atletico right. and we have to defend our lead. Okay, One semi-final league. against Atletico. Who's the other, who's the other semi-final? It's Mallorca Real Sociedad. Okay. Is Nico Williams suspended no. for just the league or uh, for the next game uh, so he would uh, miss this cup game? Uh, no, 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 he's missing the game against Barcelona in La Liga, okay. but he's not missing the game. Barcelona. Antoine Griezmann may not play against Atletico, though. He's got a problem in his ankle. Who? Yeah. Right, okay, he didn't look... He certainly wasn't quite against at Inter. it against Inter. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He and he went off, had a big thing of ice on his... Yeah, well, there you mm. go. Mm -hmm. right. Barcelona, oof, who Athletic play next week. Yeah. Yeah. 4 nil winners over Getafe. Over Getafe, yeah. Getafe. <laughs> the... Bless you. <laughs> it was the, the first hammer in that they managed to inflict properly to a team since September, probably, mm. when they beat uh, Betis and Antwerp 5-0 yeah. in back-to-back -back games. I think that Xavi got it right here. I mean, his game plan was really good. Uh, Getafe plays with a very high line, and then they make a lot of faults and they interrupt, they interrupt the game a lot in midfield. This is the way they play. Mm. And uh, I think that the best interpreter of Xavi's idea was Rafinha, 
in the game and to a lesser extent Christensen because they did these runs behind the defense and uh, Rafinha scored like this one of the goals Christensen uh, were doing that from his holding midfield position he was doing that and uh, a couple of times he managed to get to the um, to the byline and, uh, and send good crosses it was a good win for Barcelona I would say with another player from the academy uh, starting Pauku Garcia how was he, 12? Uh, he <laughs> could. He started before. It's not <laughs> about this time. No, but he's 17. And oh, okay. La, La Miña Mal, a uh, year ago, uh, right. had his debut in La Liga and he was 15. Mm. And uh, the amount of youngsters that uh, Xavi is playing um, is really big. And right. uh, Pauco Barcí had a very good game as well. But generally speaking, it was a good win for Barcelona. Uh, I'll say. With um, another goal from another acad academy footballer, not so young, Fermín, 20 mm. years old. So, you know, the future of Barcelona will rely a lot on these guys. And uh, Xavi's legacy in Barcelona, when he leaves this season, mm. uh, is going to be probably winning La Liga last season. And on, more importantly, probably having settled like five or six really young players in the, in the first team. Very nice, very nice. All right, James, you didn't actually get a Serie A section, although you managed to make the whole Europa League draw all about Roma. Yeah. 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 But let's uh, catch up on one or two other key stories from Italy. Next. What's going on in Italy? You mentioned the fact that Roma chasing Champions League action. It could be top four, could be top five. We don't know. Top four, the team they need to be are Bologna, who made it their fifth straight win at the weekend, beating Verona 2-0. At the top, Inter, nine points clear. This week, Simone Inzaghi, comfortable with that advantage, made seven changes to his lineup <laughs> when they went to Lecce. He still blew them away 4-0. Lautaro Martinez scoring... His 100th and 101st City A goals. Woof. Yeah, but as you mentioned, it's all about uh, the bench and mm. how Inzaghi is able to rotate his team and the goals that are being scored by the guys who are coming in. So, for example, against Atleti, with Arnautovic, yeah, we're seeing the backup wing backs, Carlos Augusto, Denzel Dumfries, also having big impact so there's a harmony at Inter right now which means that they just cannot be caught do you want to have a stat here's a stat Inter's goal difference is plus 51 plus 51 no other team in Serie A has even managed to score 51 goals <laughs> it's incredible and nice. pl uh, is plus 51 a better tally than mm. uh, the point tally of the second qualified in Serie A nobody's so head you to head anyway you mean the team below? You went yeah, to the team below. Yeah. Do they have 51 points? Do they even uh, have just 51? Checking oh, 51 now. Points, yes, they do. They have 57. 57, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know. I mean, they've got 66 so. points after 25 games. Mm. They've only done that once before. Mm. And that was in 2006, 2007. Brings us back to a Calciopoli chat. Where oh, yeah. Obviously, Juventus have been relegated. Mm. The other teams have been diminished into the one team that came out of that scandal unscathed and were able to take you know players like Ibrahimovic, Vieira off Juventus and just dominated the league in a way that no one had done before. This is very different, mm. of course, because there's been no such scandal. The team yeah. has just been very well. <laughs> the team has just been incredibly well put together and, as we've often said, has come back from losing that Champions League final in Istanbul convinced that they could have won it hmm. and there is just no they're in a league of their own they've only right. lost one league game this year I know James mm. knows the answer mm. so I'm going to ask you what? Who, who did they lose against it was Sassuolo I think. Oh, nice yeah. Yeah. Aston Sass Ciro as well of all yeah. games that you might lose in a season yeah, 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 not yeah. this one that you would have thought Sassuolo beat Juventus as well Yeah, they sacked their coach this weekend well, yeah so oh, I was yeah, going to get on to the events down the bottom so Sassuolo are currently just outside the bottom three and they're level on 20 points with Verona and Cagliari both of whom are currently in the relegation places Salernitana bottom of the pile mm -hmm. are seven points adrift Already onto their third manager of the season. <laughs> they may soon, the talk is, go to a fourth yep. because they binned Pippo Inzaghi yep. on the eve of what would have been the derby clash with his brother, Simone Inzaghi's Inter, brought in Fabio Liverani, but apparently are now deciding that they might bring Pippo back. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, he's still under contract. <laughs> yeah. The interesting thing with Liverani, I remember just before the first game against Inter at San Siro, was Beppe Bergami, the former Inter captain, Lozio, 
was saying, oh, this is going to be a really tricky game for Inter because, you know, they've got Atletico coming up, so they're going to be rotating and Salernitano are going to have this new manager bounce. They've gone with three attackers. They've changed systems. So all the match preparation that Inzaghi and his team have done is going to be thrown out the window. And they were, what, 3-0 up at half time. <laughs> so, yeah, it looks like Liberalani will be out uh, very, very soon. Um, and they can't go back to Davide Nicola because and neither can Sassuolo uh, appoint the miracle-making uh, Davide Nicola because Empoli got there first and Empoli are uh, undefeated on the Nicola who has been in charge for six games won the first game 3-0 against Monza then took the first points off Juventus after Inter in September in Turin and got another stoppage time win uh, against well both Salernitana and Sassuolo mm. so he caused Inzaghi to be sacked and now he's caused Dionisi to be sacked. Yeah. And Empoli's record under Davide Nicola would be good enough for fifth had the season started when he took charge, which obviously <laughs> it doesn't because that doesn't happen. <laughs> but you know, but yeah. it goes yeah. to show the obviously form that games. they're in. Yeah. yeah, amazing. Yeah, so the Sassuolo uh, firing their manager Dionisi and bringing in or promoting Emiliano Bijica mm -hmm. as his replacement. That's the eighth change in Serie A this season. Eight. Yeah, and there will be more in yeah. the summer. Okay. I think it's going to be a really interesting summer because obviously Barcelona job is available, Bayern job is available, the Milan job might be available, Juventus job might be available, Napoli well, yeah, job probably, will yeah. be available, Roma job think, with De Rossi, yeah. we don't know, Liverpool job will be available. Mm. Juve, Allegri, no? Well, that was one of the narratives that came out of this weekend's game against Frosinone which Their first win in five yeah and Juventus won it in stoppage time was before the game their sporting director who came from Napoli in the summer Cristiano Giuntoli was like we're really happy with Allegri you know we want him to stay and Allegri that was put to him after the game and he was non-committal mm -hmm. and Allegri is going to the final 18 months of his contract expires in 2025 and I think the feeling was when they asked him about Juntili's comments, he'd be like, oh, fantastic, great, you know, good, I'm, I'm here for, for the long haul as well, maybe we'll sign a contract extension. And instead he was very, very non-committal, as I say. So we'll have to see. I mean, in the past, the stumbling block... Next weekend if he's sat on an aluminium flight case. Mm. <laughs> then we know what's going flight on. Case. <laughs> but in the past, the stumbling block to getting rid of Allegri and all this Allegri out, stuff on Twitter was the length of his contract and how expensive it would be to buy him out of it whereas if you're going into the final year that becomes a little less problematic but mm. I think were they to finish second because Milan have had the chance to overtake them in the last two weeks and they haven't done it were they to finish second were they to win the Coppa Italia I think it would be quite difficult for Juventus to justify sacking Allegri no matter what people on Twitter and some fans think. All right, currently four points between Juventus in second place and Milan in third. <laughs> so there you go. What an excellent roundup that was of not just Italy, but mainly, but, <laughs> but also all the European, all the European leagues that we like to take an special interest in. Many, many thanks to James, Alvaro, Rafa and Jules. And Rachel and Charlie in the booth and you, listener, do join us on Thursday when we'll be talking about some stuff. And alternatively next Tuesday for another Euro show. Splendid. We'll be ahead of the return of European action. Midweek stuff. Yeah. Okay, great. Have a nice time in the meanwhile from all of us here. It's goodbye. The Totally Football Show podcast is available three times a week, bringing you all the football news you could reasonably be expected to care about. We've got views we've got stats we've got analysis we've got some of the best football writers around and the whole thing is absolutely free so have a listen on spotify or apple podcasts or all the usual places by clicking on the link below